In the intro video, we talked about our first target, a home door alarm system. You can pick up at Home Depot for roughly $30 or $40, depending on the components. The first thing we need to do before we can start hacking this door alarm system is to understand what it actually does in its normal functioning state. So let me pull up a video and we can check that out. This door alarm kit comes with a motion sensor, a door alert, a doorbell, and a base station. If I wave my hand in front of the motion sensor, it'll trigger the alert, and it takes about six or seven seconds for that alert to go away. When it does, it's also sending a transmission from the motion sensor to turn that off. The light went off. Now if I open up the door, it'll also alert. And if I hit the doorbell, of course the doorbell will ring. The first tool we're going to use is the Yardstick 1. We'll use this to send our attacks after we demodulate the signals. We also have the RTL SDR we can use to capture our signals. And the Hack RF1, which works on a large range of frequencies and can send and receive, just not at the same time. Now we know these components are communicating wirelessly because they are not connected in any other way. In order for the components to trigger alerts on the base station, they are sending those triggers over a wireless frequency. We first need to know what that frequency is before we can interact with them. Fortunately, this can be easily determined by looking up the FCID value on the back of the transmitters. In this case, I took a screenshot shown here. You'll see that our FCID is BJ4-WLTX202. The website FCCID.io has a search field for FCCIDs. We can find a lot of useful information on this site. So if I do a search, The application is a wireless door chime transceiver. It's registered by a company called Health CO LLC. And it is running on a frequency range of 315 to 315 megahertz, which is what we need to start hacking around on it. If we cruise down a bit, you'll see other useful information such as internal photos. If we take a look at these, that is the transceiver with the back part off. Um, it looks like there is a possible UART header in there. If we cruise down, we'll see some more uh, photos. And you'll see it taken apart. Some more information, such as flash chips. Um, it looks like a close-up of what might be the UART header showing the pinout of ground VCC. Uh, looks like that says data. Um, so that's all very, very useful if we want to do a hardware hacking side of things. Um, next up is the test report, which typically has all the information you need, including the frequency if it wasn't in the previous page. There's a lot of useful information in here. We're not really going to cruise through it all that much because we already have the frequency, which is what we need to get started. But there's a lot of useful information in here you can use. Usually it'll list the modulation type. It has the frequency. It has a lot of information on testing it and how it actually is supposed to function. Um, there's usually graphs and different information regarding the frequencies. Here's one here. Um, so if you scroll through this, there's quite a lot of information you can look at and really get a good idea of, you know, what's going on with this device. For example, in this graph, it's showing the 315.04 frequency and it's showing the spike there from the device transmission. So I'm not going to really go into this too much more because we have what we need to start hacking, which is the 315 frequency is what it's transmitting on. So let's see if we can blindly capture a transmission and then replay that transmission without knowing the details of anything further. In order to do this, we can plug in our HackRF device.
If we open up a terminal with our hackrf connected, we can type in hackrf underscore info and it'll let us know that we're properly connected and we have our drivers installed. Next, we can type in hackrf underscore transfer dash r for receive. Type in the name of the file you want to create, followed by the frequency, which is 315. We have to add six zeros after that. And a minus L24 minus G20 to add some gain. You'll hear the doorbell in the background as we do our capture. Next, we're just going to replay back exactly what we got in that file. We're going to add in some gain. And we're also going to put in a capital R, which just repeats the transmission over and over again. And change it to T for transfer. It looks like it worked. You can hear it in the background. And then it's going to restart it again from the R, and you'll hear the doorbell a second time. So everything seems to be working, yet we don't know anything or how we did it or what we did. So let's take a look a little closer at the frequency and what's going on, and see how we can do this with a little more precision. We're going to use GQRX to analyze the transmission. We will need to check that we're using the correct device, which is our RTL SDR Realtek. We can click in here and change the frequency or type it in. We need 315 and hit play. We'll then start our door alarm. You'll notice it's slightly off, so let's hit it again and adjust it directly on where the frequency looks like. Looks like it's on 314-988-700. We'll hit stop. And next, let's take a recording of the frequency so that way we can analyze it. If you hit the play button again and then go down to record, we can get a capture of the transmission. So play your doorbell again, then hit record, and it will save it to your home directory. If we open up that in our home directory in Audacity, we can take a look at what it looks like. The first thing you'll notice is that there is a repeating transmission value. If we zoom in a bit, you'll notice they still look about the same, and as we get closer, you'll realize the patterns are just repeating over and over again. So let's highlight one of these and zoom into a level where we can see the whole thing. All right, we can use this in order to demodulate the signal and then send a more precise attack with our yardstick one. In the next video, we're going to do precisely that, so if you learned something, hit the like button below. If you want to keep updated to new videos, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.